Hey guys, I want to record a video here about Google Photos. Absolutely a massive fan of Google Photos. Um, but just before I talk with you about that, I want to let you know something about when I've just hopped on live here. So Facebook has been rolling out um, a requirement for managers of admins of Facebook pages to uh, implement two-factor authentication and I don't think it's on all pages but it, the notification is you know pages with a certain reach I've seen it on the VA lifestyle design page and um, some client accounts as well where Facebook is saying on the back end of a page a business page you can't publish as this page until such time as you implement two-factor authentication um, and I had seen the notification there for a while and I'd kind of been putting it off um, and then I have just finished a, a Q&A uh, call with members of the Online Biz Skills and I had this come to mind that I wanted to share about Google Photos. And, um, and I thought, oh, well, I can't publish as my page because I still have to set up that two-factor authentica authentication. Um, so I went to record a, just a, a, a private video on QuickTime and I couldn't do it because I felt like I was completely talking to myself. And it's funny, but when I hop on live, even if, if no one's here because I haven't pre-scheduled or what have you, uh, I still feel like I'm having a conversation so I can just talk naturally. But it was funny because I used to record videos all the time, uh, just you know, on my phone or, um, or on QuickTime on webcam or what have you. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just felt like I'm um, having a pretend conversation and somehow it's different when I go live. So quick tip there before we talk about Google Photos. If you have been considering um, sharing video or putting an intro video together as you're kicking off your VA career or your freelancing career or if you're more established and you've been considering video, uh, you might think that live could be potentially more intimidating, but I actually find it a lot more comfortable because whatever trick of the brain happens for me, I actually feel like I'm conversing naturally um, more so than if I was to record on a phone or just on webcam and no one's actually listening to me. Even if still I'm on live and no one's listening to me, it's still it's just a funny trick of the mind. Quick tip, could, could help you. Um, it just, uh, it's, it's funny seeing how, how psychology works and observing it. Hey Jill, awesome that you are here live to see this. So I am actually conversing with someone, thanks for confirming. Um, so yes, I have been a nerd and um, it's funny because as, as much depth as I go into online work, I'm still kind of uh, behind the times with certain, you know, technical specifics and setting up the Google Authenticator app was uh, a new thing for me today. I hadn't done that yet. My husband had some time ago because he was logging into some, I don't know, cryptocurrency thing or what have you, but I'm on, I'm on my game with Google Authenticator app. If you're a newbie to that like me, it's... Uh, very, very simple and quick. Um, and if you are working with clients and they've had any of those issues with the security update rolling out with Facebook, uh, you can let them know it's really simple to set up two-factor authentication on Facebook with the, um, the way that I chose to do it was with the Google Authenticator app. Okay, let's dive in. Quickly talk about Google Photos. This is really something that um, has been on my mind a lot over the last few months. And the reason is I continue to see that with working with businesses, it's extremely rare, no matter what size the business, small to very large, um, it's extremely rare that there is a really nice, clean, organized structure of all of the image assets, the photos, the graphics and so forth, even the video content as well, the raw, the raw content that they've got to kind of repurpose and work with. Um, that there's a nice clean structure to how that's organized so that people coming in, whether they're supporters, VAs, digital marketers, social media strategists, whatever it is, people coming in can leverage those assets to create whatever they need to create and put that business um, forward in the best light with the best possible images or the best content. But I continue to see that most business have businesses have a lot of material on the back end to work with stuff that might not have been used or published it might not be on a landing page or a social media post or a blog post or on the website they've got this raw material but it's not easily accessible by the people that are going to leverage that in different ways in content marketing in launches in paid social media organic social media what have you and it's a really really important thing to do so 
there are different systems that can be used to structure this um, storehouse of images that businesses have so that they can be accessed readily uh, for use in digital marketing and growing that person's business. And let's just kind of go through some of the systems. Like when I first got started, I just saw it's gone a bit dark there, guys. Hopefully you can still see me. Um, when I first got started working online, uh, 2011, the most popular system with, well, definitely with all the clients that I was working with was Dropbox. Um, I still commonly see Dropbox used, uh, but more and more I'm seeing, and I mean, as you know, like um, you're always kind of shining your spotlight in a different area or a different subset of businesses online. So for you, Dropbox might be still what you see all your clients working in. For me, what I see most commonly is Google Drive, right? So Dropbox used to be the one I worked in the most. Google Drive, right? Uh, Box is another common one, particularly when uh, assets are coming through from people that are not VAs or digital marketing supporters, but they're actually designers and so forth. They might be using a system called Box. I don't have links here, guys, but Google these up. You know, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, Box. Uh, if you're watching live and you, you're familiar with another system that people are using for uh, file storage, in particular image, or graphic storage, uh, drop it in the comments, even if you're watching the recording. And uh, so, yeah, they're the big ones, but what I'm finding is that commonly, I'm not seeing people using Google Photos. And I have absolutely no idea why. And this is the purpose of this video, is to share with you what a fan I am of the, the functionality and the user experience for being able to uh, store graphics and photos in Google Photos. And the way that Google lays them out in Google Photos specifically, photos.google.com, not Google Drive, right? Google Photos. The way that Google lays them out in Photos is so um, beautiful, first of all, which I love beautiful things that are fun to look at when I'm working away, nerding out on the computer, but also very easy to visually scan to access the specific thing you need when you've got each next task in mind. Ah. We need to do that um, pre-sell article about this product, right? We need a lifestyle image that has product X in context, in use. Or we need a personal brand image of the client that's not a professional shot. We need a candid shot. Or we need a shot of them with other people in the context, maybe from that last event we did. I'm just talking through some specific um, kind of scenarios there. Uh, and so what you're able to do is when you open up Google Photos, and I'm not screen sharing here, but go and check it out for yourself because you can set up a personal account if you haven't got one already. Um, and you can just visually scan through. It's very, very easy to use. And you can very easily sort those uh, images or graphics into albums. So you might have one that's like uh, professional product shots or professional brand shots or candid event shots or um, lifestyle product shots or uh this event or that event or whatever whatever is like the context for that business um you know whatever is like the type the, the various types of images they have um that are in use both professionally taken and uh amateur or that the client has taken themselves you know you know with iphone or what have you um the other thing is that the search functionality in google photos is exceptional right I, I really push this to the nth degree with um, my personal Google Photos uh, collection, right? So I have our family's photos in there. Now, I do use search in uh, clients' Google Photos setup as well, but for the most part, that's been created with structure in mind, whereas our personal photos are just all dumped in there and there's like thousands of them because my husband and my phone just syncs up to the same personal Google Photos uh, uh, album, no, collection or whatever it's called. And uh, I've, I've pushed it to the nth degree where I've searched on something like the girls and I were just testing out how cool the search feature was and we searched on Flamingo and it came up with photos of where the girls had this tiny like Flamingo printed on their t-shirt like two years ago or whatever. Um, I've typed in, you can type on people's names, right? So I, I typed in my son's name, Sean, dancing. And it literally came up with the video content where there's movement and usually 95% of the time it was dancing, but other things that might have been him jumping around or whatever, and video content where he was dancing. The search functionality is like 
crazy. It's like the future, next, next level. Now, I have used that with searching when clients have a big, you know, dump of images or what have you. But for the most part, I'm like visually scanning in that context. But just knowing that like if there are a lot, a lot of images that, that your client has, the search functionality is, I've not seen it in any other system. And you know that, right? Google has the technology um, for search. It's a big reason why Drive um, is so powerful for working online as well, because it's just so easy to recall what you need. Now, one big distinction here is that when you're uploading images in Google Drive, which is what I see business owners doing more commonly, you can't quickly visually scan them. They just look like all image thumbnails and you need to open each individual image. Um, and for whatever reason, perhaps it's just not, you know, Google doesn't fully market their, all of their different um, apps and, and functionality, but for whatever reason, there's just not this big uptake with Google Photos. So my big recommendation there is um, try it out. Now, there's two ways to do it. The first way is if you are working with businesses kind of where you're taking the lead and you might be, say, it doesn't have to be photos, so you could be creating Instagram square graphics for them, like quote graphics or cropping of their photos that you're going to share. What I find is a really cool value add is create an album and do that in a brand account. So with Google Photos, it's attached to your Google ID. So if you have a free Gmail account, it's attached to that. Or if you have a paid G Suite account with your own website domain, it's attached to that. So you already will have access. If you don't have a Google ID by chance, uh, set up a free Gmail account and that will come with the free Google Photos account. Uh, but then you also have the option to set up what's called a brand account, a Google brand account, just the same as you have a Google brand account for your client's YouTube channel or perhaps you can also have a brand account for uh, Google Photos. So what I do is I set up a, well, I set up a brand account for Grease and Media. You don't have to call it a business name. You could have it be a brand account, but just your name, but just so that it separates out the photos that you're going to share or the graphics you're going to share back with clients from your personal Google Photos because I highly recommend using it for personal um, as well if you haven't already for, you, for your family photos or your personal photos or have your travel photos, whatever. Um, but so you have this separate account so that you don't have your client stuff mixed in with your personal stuff because that, that's not cool um, for yourself. And then into that brand account, you create an album that's specifically for that client or you might have several depending on what the breakdown is. You might have photos and graphics or... Um, you know, website content images or social media images, depending on, on what you're helping them with. But just let's say it's Instagram, you're creating these graphics, creating them in Canva or in Photoshop, you upload them to an album in your brand account, then you share just that one album over to the client's uh, Gmail address or over so they've got the link directly. Even if you're uploading and scheduling those graphics directly to your client's Instagram or Facebook account or whatever social media platform, uh, I find that it's a really cool value add and just increasing that perception of like, wow, this person's super professional. Oh, and they've given me the image assets to actually share those over in an album. The client may not even use them or touch them or give them to anyone else to repurpose or whatever, but just seeing, oh, hey, they've scheduled them, but they've, they've made them and they're all stored here and they've sent them over to me. Right, so that's a really cool value add. The second way to kind of use it is, let's say you're not necessarily kind of taking the lead and not using your own brand account, which could just be called your name, but it's separated out from your personal um, photos. But you're actually setting up a brand account or there already is a Google brand account for your client's business. And they may or may not, they're probably not, well, I haven't actually come upon any businesses of any size leveraging Google Photos yet. I have no idea why. Um, but normally their photos are, you know, some are in Dropbox, some are on that person's computer, some are in Google Drive, you know. it's uh, So, yeah, so they might already have a Google brand account, let's say for the YouTube channel. Set, help them to set up uh, Google Photos for that same brand account. Invite yourself a, um, as a user on that so that you've got access to it. And then one of the tasks as a supporter is actually to structure and organize the images so that they're ready to go for other digital marketing tasks, both for you and for other people that are either on the team or are going to come in as consultants. So, for example, in my work in Facebook and Instagram advertising, there is um, a, a need for, you know, 
uh, images and video assets all the time. Uh, and there's also a need to know which images or video assets are already pre-approved, or not pre-approved, that's probably a too official sounding, but have the green light, you know, to be used or which are kind of out of date or the client prefers not to use them or they don't like that picture of themselves or that one isn't on brand anymore or they don't sell that product. Like to distinguish, okay, these images have the green light. Like whoever comes in on the team or whoever comes in as a consultant can grab those and run with them. And there's often a significant delay time in lots of different types of work, whether it's building a new website or getting Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising up and running or getting an organic social media strategy up and running where content needs to be created. There's often a delay when people are trying to piece together their images. Oh yeah, I'd love you to help me with that, but we got to piece all these things together first. We need these lifestyle images or these personal brand images or these product images or these whatever, right? Um, so part of your work, if you're on a team, is to go, hey, look, we've got all these assets. Why don't I structure them so they're ready to go so everyone can have central access and they can log in? So what I'm describing here is actually the organisation of the existing image assets being a task in and of itself that you proactively suggest to a business owner that you're helping kind of as their right-hand person or as an integrated team member. And doing that, not like the first example where I shared where you're maybe creating stuff and then just share it an album directly with them through your setup, but you're setting it up internally like for their business as a whole. Um, and if you're not working online already, like you, you may not be familiar with the scenario, but I bet for anyone that's established um, or has been working with clients for six months or more, you would have seen these scenarios where it's like someone's asking for raw materials, image or video assets, right? Because that's all this digital marketing stuff is, image, video, audio and text, right? Um, repurposed in different ways with people sharing their expertise or their inspiration or um, the, the way that they help people in, in the digital space, right? Physical products, digital products or local businesses marketing and sharing online as well. Um, so there's so many times where it's like that needs to be drawn on. So you proactively offering that and then kind of maintaining that on an ongoing basis, it might be that like, okay, new images come in, you make sure that you kind of choose the best 10, send them to the lead team member or to the client for approval. You make sure that they're stored in the right place. It's incredible value that you're adding by actually doing that. Um, and I, I just can't um, express enough how uh, common it is that this just isn't ready and how uh, much time is lost when someone wants a website design up or they want a product launch up and they want ads running or they want social media posts up for the um, to support you know a funnel or what have you and they just can't because people are trying to piece together all of these um, raw materials so Google Photos is my recommendation for that when there is a significant volume in there uh, it may be the case well actually I pay for storage I can't remember how much I pay for a terabyte uh, it's like I don't know I can't remember if it's ten dollars or twenty dollars whatever I'm um, got quite a few software subscriptions, but you wouldn't be paying for that if you're organizing it for a client. You would actually be, um, they would pay for it. And it's a very kind of nominal, nominal amount when you're considering what they pay for other significantly um, higher priced software subscriptions, right? Uh, but, you know, when you're doing it yourself, you can use a free account. Normally that's got enough space. If you're doing a lot of volume of work, then you might pay uh, a small amount to have um, a, a bigger portion of Google storage, but that storage uh, goes across your different Google apps that you have attached either, either to that brand account or to your personal account. Okay, so I think that's it. I think I've probably shared my passion enough. And uh, if you are working with a business that is already storing their assets with Google Photos, do let me know because for whatever reason, I'm just so surprised I haven't come upon it yet. Big time Dropbox, Google Drive, um, box, but just not Google Photos. If, you, if you've seen a, an example otherwise, I would love to know. And if not, you'd be the one to um, jump in and advocate it. And you can actually experiment first up with all your personal photos um, through a free Gmail address. All right, hopefully that helps. Let me just see. I meant, hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly. How can we use G Suite as a rental email quarterly? Hmm, I don't know what a rental email is. Uh, I pay $5 a month uh, for the subscription per email address that's connected to uh, greaseandmedia.com and balifestyledesign.com. Uh, I don't know about quarterly or what a rental email address is. So, hmm, sorry, I can't help with that. But, yeah, I pay the, um, the subscription fee 
through G Suite. Okay, any comments or questions on that on the recording, feel free to jump in and uh, really hope that helps. Ciao for now, guys. All right, bye.